relax, my boy. You can't be serious after hiding such important facts. B but... But the next witness is my dolly, right? She'll save me. I just know she will. Uh, why do you think that? Huh? What do you mean? She's she's the love of my life, that's why. The love of your life? Huh. Would you mind telling me more about how you and Miss Dahlia Hawthorne... Sure, no problem. Dolly and I, we first met eight months ago, right here in this very courthouse. Actually, I'm studying to be a lawyer, on the side, anyway. One day, she and I just bumped into each other in the reading room downstairs. That's why I think, I really think it was fate that brought us together. As soon as I first set eyes on her, I knew she was the one for me. Oh, here, take a look at this. She gave this to me the day we met as a symbol of our love. That's interesting. She'd been wearing it around her neck that day, but then she took it off. But before she gave it to me, she said, I want you to carry this. So, she gave you a... She gave it to you as a present. I see. This darling little bottle is filled with... This darling little bottle is filled with my memories of my darling little dolly. God, Phoenix. So weird. Just please go back to normal, Phoenix. Please. It certainly is a little bottle, alright. Makes me so happy. I show it to everyone I meet. I want to share my happiness with the whole world. Ooh, that's gonna be important, isn't it? Uh, so we borrowed- uh, yeah, it was borrowed from- anyway. Uh, anyway. Yeah, <laughs> anyway. So, after that, you and Miss Hawthorne started dating. Yeah, but she's so shy. Every time I see her, she always says the same thing to me. Please give it back now. What a strange girl. Ask for a present back like that. By the way, Mr. Wright. The day you first met Dahlia Hawthorne, eight months ago. It wouldn't happen to have been on August 27th, would it? Huh? Yeah, it was. But how did you... This happened on August 27th, right here in the, this courthouse. What's this, a newspaper clipping? Let's see, murder in the courthouse. Murder? What are you reading there? Let me see that. Hmm, oh, I see. Mia, I think I understand what you're trying to say. Hmm, and I think I understand why you suddenly took such an inter keen interest in this case. You believe there is some relationship between these two cases. Am I correct? Okay, we got a newspaper clipping. Let me read this newspaper clipping. First of all, let's look at this. A small ball of necklace given to Bright on the day they met. He shows it to everyone. Alright. And the newspaper clipping. An article from 828, almost eight months ago. Okay, eight months ago. That's when her and the ex-boyfriend broke up. So, check button. Murder in the courthouse. Very little information is being disclosed at this time. Since the victim of yesterday's incident in the district courthouse cafeteria is said to have been a lawyer. However, police are questioning the 19-year-old female college student who was sitting with the victim. Oh, uh ho ho. This is... Okay. I hope you don't mind, Mr. Grossberg. I... I need to finish this myself. Ah, uh, yes, but I'm afraid what you have will not be enough, my dear. I'll go have a look downstairs at the downstairs reading room and see if I can find it. What else I can find? Thank you. Holy crap, Grossberg's thing useful? I'm so proud of him. I want to do whatever I can to be of help to you, Mia. Well, it looks like recess is about over. We'd better get all get moving. I, I guess so. That recess sure seemed longer than 20 minutes, though. Was it longer than 20 minutes? Oh, like, like, five minutes. Did they change the save music? Okay. Uh, it sounds like they changed the same music. Yeah, let's let's do a good old save. Okay, got a little save there. April 11th, 12.13 p.m., District Court, courtroom number two. Court will now reconvene. Mr. Payne, please call your witness. 
The next person is someone who witnessed the crime as it happened. Man, this is some good music for this. Just like, okay, yeah. Anyway, um, uh, the prosecution calls Miss Dahlia Hawthorne to the stand. Huh, interesting. Oh god, Butterflies. Jeez. What's with the stiff silence? In my long career as a judge, I have been deceived by many witnesses. It's my job to doubt. To take no one at their word. But in your case, I must admit that you radiate a glow of complete sincerity! I can't believe he actually said that. <laughs> oh, uh, now then, witness, could you please state your full name? And number. <laughs> I, uh... Don't worry, sweetie. There's no need to be nervous. Oh, God, Josh. <laughs> oh, my goodness. If anyone says anything rude, you can be sure I'll cut them right down to size. And I will bash them with my gavel. I used to be a dwarf in a previous life. Love how they look straight at me when they, <laughs> when they say that. Uh, thank you for calming my nerves. You are all so nice. I almost feel right at home. Not at all. It was nothing. If we may move on now, what is your full name and occupation? My name is Dahlia Hawthorne. I'm a junior in literature at Ivy University. I just want to say, it's an honor for me to be here in your noble presence. The honor is all mine! No, the honor is mine! Well, we know whose milkshake brings all these boys to you. <laughs> oh god, this game's killed me right now. We know whose milkshake brings all the boys to the yard. Yeah, that's... that's for certain. Uh, sir? Is there something I can help you with? You just go and say whatever's on your mind. I'm sure there must be some kind of mistake. Feeny wouldn't kill anyone. I, I just know it. Yes, yes. I can see why you'd say that. She's going to be a tough witness, alright. It only took her 12 seconds to wrap them all around her little finger. Now then, please proceed with your testimony. Let's hear about what you witnessed on the day of the incident, if you please. Yeah, what you witnessed. I, I had been planning to go back to Feeney's place after class was over. Feeney and Doogie, they were talking behind this building. Then, suddenly, Doogie got all wobbly and co just collapsed. Wait, that's making everything just... Okay, that's when Feeney noticed that, that I was there. I went to go find some other students, and they called the authorities. Uh, I don't know what to say. According to you, Miss Hawthorne, the defendant didn't do anything wrong. Hmm. Young lady. As old as I am, even I recall how hot the flames of young passion can burn. Nevertheless, it is my job to discover the truth. Please, tell us the truth. B but but I... I would never... That's more than enough, Witness. I won't allow this to continue. What do you mean by that? Please, just let me proceed with my cross-examination, Your Honor. I, for one, don't plan to win my case on a bunch of paper-thin lies. Hehe. <laughs> you haven't changed a bit, EFA. What's this? So you two are... acquainted? Yes, we've met before, once. Hmm, okay, so was this the previous case they were talking about then? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, I think it is actually, yeah. Never mind, okay, yeah, didn't know what that case was then. In any case, Miss Fay, the floor is all yours. It's good to see you again, Madam Fay. Madam, I'm no one's grandma yet, girly. Alright, let's see what we can press on here. So, after class was over, he had been planning to go back to Feeney's place after class was over. Feeney, that's such a horrible nickname. Now, unless I'm mistaken, Feeney, I mean, Mr. Wright was in the art department. If that's the case, then what were you doing by the pharmacology building? Well, 
I'm in the literature department. I'm studying Japanese senryu po sen poetry? Huh. Oh, how wonderful. It's that humorous yet satirical style of haiku. Yes? Nothing left to do. When the man reaches this age, sleep is his best friend. That's supposed to be poetry? Sounds more like midlife crisis. For me to get to the art department, I have to walk through the back area. Ah, yes, I see, that makes sense. When I want to enter the courthouse, I will walk through the front doors. I always walk through the front doors. How else would you enter? Teleportation? I mean, he might have teleportation powers, I don't know. The judge is, you know... He, he's, he's one of those things, you don't question the judge. Beanie and Dougie, they were talking behind the building. Did you manage to catch what they were talking about? So who's this Doogie person? Oh, I'm sorry, Doug Swallow. They were dating until about eight months ago. Or we were, yeah. So what were Doogie, uh, Mr. Swallow and Mr. Wright talking about anyway? Huh, how could you be so mean? I would never, I would never eavesdrop. I wasn't raised to be so rude and unrefined. That's right, Miss May. Don't drag the witness down to your level. <laughs> oh, man. Why am I being demonized here? Holy crap, this is... Please, go on. What did you see next? And suddenly, Doogie got all wobbly and just collapsed. Yeah, this is the one I'm probably gonna have to... Uh, contradict... <laughs> this one, uh... Anyway. Are you saying that the victim just collapsed on his own? Yes. In other words, the defendant never touched the victim. Is that right? But what about the fingerprints? I was watching the whole time. Feeney never did a thing to Doogie. If I pressed her for no re good reason, I just know the judge will get angry with me. Huh, so what should I do about her testimony just now? Uh, do I have the fingerprints on... I don't... Huh. I wish I had his leather jacket here. Because then I could actually say I have a contradiction. Okay, that's not going to help here. Neither is that, so we can cancel those two out. Let's look at the crime photo real quick. I wish I... Had, yeah, as I say, I wish I had a leather jacket. Yeah, that doesn't say anything about the actual pushing, so let's leave it alone for now. I I don't know if I have anything, supposedly. I need the leather jacket. Hmm, I suppose her statement works in our favor. For now... I'll hold off on looking into it any deeper until it's necessary. Very well, young lady. Please go on with your testimony. Yeah, and that would put Phoenix into an even worse position right now, so... Let's not let's not deal with that statement right there. That's when Feeney noticed that I was there. Okay, what did he do when he noticed you were there? And what did Mr. Wright say when he saw you? I, I'm sorry. I, I was so flustered that I... I really don't remember. P please forgive me. You don't remember? Well, that's common enough. Sometimes I can't recall the sentence I passed only minutes prior. What was this case about again? But please, someone, anyone, stop him before he gets hurt. By me. I went to go find some other students and they called the authorities. When you say students, do you mean students from the pharmacology department? Yes. They're all very fond of their drugs. Please try to stay on topic. So to find some pharmacology students, you went to the labs, correct? That's what I was planning to do, but in the end, I wound up not going. A group of about ten researcher students came running out of the building entrance. Somehow they all seemed to know what was going on. The students knew what was going on. Oh, this I want more details on. Maybe they knew that one of the lines had broken. But how could the students have known what was going on? Well, I don't know for sure what... <laughs> sure that they knew what had happened. It's just they all seem kind of excited about something. Huh. Doesn't look like I'm going to get any more info about the students. So did the students call the police? Yes, I was just so... I was so panicked. Huh. Yes, well, anyone would have been, my dear. That girl, she's telling a super obvious lie, and she knows it. She's just pretending to protect Mr. Wright. Yep. Yes, 
That's gotta be it. Way to go, Mia. Okay, that means I'm gonna have to dig deeper to find any contra find the contradiction on this one. Okay, so if I don't have the jacket right now, where was it? Woogly, Woogly collapsed all on his own. No, right here. I don't have the jacket. Maybe I should just go for it. See if I can get a contradiction. And through this. Hmm. Maybe I could just like present the picture. Uh. And just like point to the leather jacket. <laughs> Maybe that's what I have to do. It's a little roundabout way, but. I mean, I need to get the fingerprint shown somehow. Let's show a contradiction here. People's lives are not very becoming, Miss Hawthorne, so let's drop them, shall we? W what I? I would never. Miss Faye, I will not allow you to badger this witness. Oh boy. I, I believe the defense is engaged in a, a, a fishing expedition. That is, uh, she has no supporting... Please don't glare at me like that, I'm just doing my job. Now then, Miss Hawthorne. Now that we've gotten that guy out of the way. The defendant's palm print was found on Mr. Swallow's leather jacket. Never mind, did it for me. Thank you, game. It has already been shown that Mr. Wright did, in fact, push the victim. What? There's no need to try to cover for the defendant. It would be much better if you came out and told us the whole truth. Huh. There's nothing to worry about, young lady. Just tell us everything you saw. Y yes, Your Honor. I, I will, if you don't mind. I I'd like to revise my testimony. Looks like we're finally getting somewhere. Um, actually, I didn't see the moment he pushed Dougie. Didn't look like they were fighting, and I didn't hear any noise either. Wait a minute. You didn't hear a sound, but if we take Phoenix's testimony, there was a loud sound. Which is probably why all the other students came running out, maybe. Didn't hear any noise. Let's, yeah, let's press on this. So then, what did it look like they were going to do, what they were doing to you? I thought they were having a nice friendly afternoon conversation. Oh, give me a break. That's why I really wasn't watching them all that closely. Did you notice anything out of order, out of the ordinary at all? No, nothing at all, Mr. Judge. Oh, I like the sound of that, Mr. Judge. Now then, please proceed with your testimony. He's gonna be fantasizing about that tonight. Okay. Didn't hear any noise, so maybe I'll just... Yeah, maybe I'll just present the, tes the testimony then. Yeah, why not? You know what? Let's go for it. You say you didn't hear any noise. Is that correct? Yes, that's why I was very relaxed, looking at the scenery around me. And the hair flick again. Beautiful. That's nice, but I find that just a little odd. I have here the testimony of your boyfriend, Mr. Phoenix Wright. And he clearly testified to the effect that when he pushed the victim, he heard a sharp, loud noise. He, he said that? If you were really that close to the two of them, why didn't you hear this noise as well? I... Well, well maybe the noise just wasn't all that memorable. <clears throat> but according to Mr. Wright's testimony, it was a sharp noise like... Snap. How did you recreate that noise? There's no way a noise like that could fail to make an impression. Ah. Um. Uh, may I have a moment to answer? By all means. I know the reason why I didn't hear the noise. You see, the truth is, 
I had my headphones on and was listening to music at the time. Headphones? You mean that both of your ears were covered? The rain was beginning to let up. But it seemed as though Thor wasn't ready for his fun to come to an end yet. So the sky continued to flash and rumble. Thunder and lightning, huh? Yes, I'm afraid the sound of thunder. So I put my headphones on to block it out. <laughs> well, your honor, as you can see, there weren't any contradictions in her testimony after all. Huh. Wait a sec, Nia. That testimony just now. She said something that could totally, totally change this whole case. <coughs> that there was lightning. <laughs> she was listening to music. How dare she. That there was lightning. Your Honor, there's a problem with this witness's testimony. Uh, what do you mean? Didn't you notice? She said there was lightning, correct? Yes, what about it? Well, lightning is actually a large discharge of electrical and electricity in the atmosphere, am I right? That's not the type of science lesson, Miss Bay. Yes, Your Honor. Anyway, since the cause of death was electrocution, isn't it possible that the victim died from being hit by a bolt of lightning? Oh, ah. Hmm. Huh, I must admit that the thought had not occurred to me. Just what kind of thoughts do occur to this guy anyway? This entire case is built on the premise that Mr. Do Do Dog, Mr. Dog Swallow was murdered. Yes, Mr. Dog, that's definitely his name. Anyway, uh, but that very premise itself is mistaken. The defense believed, believes that Mr. Swallow was in fact the victim of a stray bolt. It appears the defense may be onto something. Could it be that the death was actually an accident? Alright, you did it, Mia. I'll be taking that not guilty now if you don't. God damn it, Winston. Hee hee hee. He he. I'm hurt that you have such a low opinion of me, Miss Faye. Huh? I'm not a fool, you know? The prosecution has done its research, Your Honor. We found that there were no lightning strikes on that day at that location. What? What's more, we have evidence that the electrical cable is definitely linked to this case. Uh, evidence, Mr. Payne? Well, what is this evidence? This is an evidence. And, uh, who is this evidence from? The pharmacology students who were conducting experiments in their labs that day. Allow me to read out the, to the court the testimony of the pharmacology students. All equipment in the labs lost power, all of a sudden, at around 3 p.m. that day. Was it a blackout? No, it was the wire being cut. Or just, uh, splitting. I don't know if it was exactly cut. Anyway, all of the lab's equipment runs on high voltage, Your Honor. So you're saying the equipment lost power because... Precisely. They lost power because the severed electrical cable. The power outage occurred at approximately 3 p.m which fits with the time of death listed in the autopsy report. Exactly. In other words, the victim died as a result of touching the severed electrical cable. According to the students, the cables were very old. They were planning on having them replaced in the near future. Huh, I see. Apparently the cables had become so brittle that even the smallest bump would have caused them to break. Hmm. However, there is one thing that troubles me. If the cables could have been broken by any small bump, then it wouldn't have snapped if it had been... If it... It would have... Wait, what? Then it wouldn't have snapped if it hadn't been bumped into. Correct? Yeah, there you go. Well, I suppose you could say that. Huh. Miss Faye. Do you have any thoughts regarding the cause of the severed cable? Hmm. Y your Honor. I, I don't like how this is looking one bit. I have to come up with something to try to regain some momentum. If it pleases the court, the defense would like to state its opinion. Well, let's hear it. Who or what was it that caused the cable to break? Hmm. So then... Let me look at this. Uh, the victim fell on top of his umbrella. There was a loud sound when this happened. But... 
So. I have the student's testimony, right? Yeah, so basically something hit them. So I'm thinking... That what Phoenix did... Yeah, I'm thinking this. It, it was... Yeah, there you go. Your Honor, please think back to Mr. Wright's testimony. The defendant's testimony? He said that after he pushed the victim, he heard a loud, sharp noise. Oh, I probably could have just presented the notes and two, I guess. Or his little testimony. Now, this happened at around 3 p.m., correct? Yes, the sounds, that sounds right. Wait, are you saying that... The lab equipment lost power at 2.55, which fits right in the Mr. Wright's timeline. In other words, it was Mr. Wright's shove that caused the power outage. Yeah, I was just doing it like, I was presenting Phoenix because I wanted to say it was like, it was Phoenix that caused it himself. Yes, the prosecution also came to the same conclusion. And it was the very show, that very shove that caused Mr. Swallow to be electrocuted. I'm afraid I can't agree with you there, Mr. Payne. What's that supposed to mean? Take a good look at where the victim landed after being shoved. See the umbrella? It's by the electrical pole. That's right. The victim b banged the, into the pole as a result of being pushed. And that impact was caused. Is what caused the cable to break. Huh. Well, that makes sense. And then the victim was electrocuted. I'm sorry, Your Honor, but no, it doesn't make sense at all. If the victim was shoved into the far pole, then he couldn't have been electrocuted by the severed cable in the foreground here. Ah. In other words, someone other than my client must have electrocuted the victim. Uh, order, order in the court. Ah, the lamentations of my enemy. How life long to hear them. It's true, the defense is absolutely correct. There doesn't seem to be any way the defendant could have... Uh... Mr. Judge, sir, may I say something? The Madam Attorney's explanation... She said some things that are a little different than I remember them. What? Well, what? What the... Please, just once more. May I please testify one last time? Please, Mr. Judge? Of course, it's all right. Just go ahead and give your new testimony. This is it. She's finally short starting to show her true colors. What I witnessed part two. The truth is, Feeney pushed him twice. Oh, now he's trying to set him up. The first time was into the electric pole. That's when the cable broke. Togi tried his, at his best to run away from him. But Feeney caught up and crashed into him from behind. The cable snapping and Dogi being electrocuted, it all occurred in less than a minute. Hmm. So, after being shoved, the victim got up and tried to run away. Something about that sounds wrong. I think it's the time. Yeah, because she said it, start it happened in all of them less than a minute. And that is when the defendant pushed him for the second time. I'm so sorry, Feeney, but I... I just have to tell the truth. A am I doing the right thing? Am I, Mr. Judge? Of course you are, my dear. As painful as it may seem, you are. Now then, Miss Bay, you may proceed with your cross-examination. I'm gonna press a bit, but I think the time is what's wrong here. Miss Hawthorne, you pre and previously in your testimony, you said the following. Uh, actually, I didn't see the moment you pushed Dougie. I, I know. I I'm sorry. I wanted to protect Feeney. So that's why you basically lied to the court? I was a bad girl, I know. Uh, Mr. Judge. Yes? Would you please, please forgive little old me? Of course he won't. What you did is called perjury. Oh, come now. It's just a little old white lie. We'll forget it this time, but please be more careful from now on, alright? Oh, thank you so much, Mr. Judge. Not at all. Ho ho ho! 
The judge had better be more careful himself. A dark alley is friendlier than that girl. 